That's why I never under, underestimate Ali Reza. He's devilishly tricky. That's what Magnus said about Ali Reza back in 2020. And in games like this, we really see why. Get ready for a wizardry combination in time pressure. Ali Reza's opponent here is the seasoned veteran Ralph Mamadov. Good luck getting past him. This is round two of the Fide Grand Swiss. Let's check it out. So we get c4 from Ali Reza. Now c5, knight f6, g6, and Ali Reza takes the center. Knight c6 played, and d4, after an exchange, we now see that Ali Reza's set up this Maroxy bind pawn structure. Big clamp here, but black's going to look for play on the dark squares. We get knight f6, knight c3 defends, and now Mamadov goes for this line of exchanging knights. Yasser did say in a recent US chess championship commentary moment that if black can exchange pieces in this Maroxy bind structure, it generally favours them because you've got less space, so therefore exchange pieces. So d6 now played, we get bishop e2, bishop g7, eyeballing the white queen, and after castles, that's why the queen now drops back. a6, often black wants b5 if it can later be arranged. And now bishop g5 is a less common move, often that bishop sits on the e3 square. Mamadov goes bishop to e6 here, targeting that pawn, very common idea for black, you know ideas of rook c8, or the knight spinning around to d5 and e5, so b3 adds some protection, does weaken this diagonal though, has to be noted, we now get knight d7, opening the bishop, queen e3, stepping away from this idea of knight c5 or knight e5 with tempo, and now after rook e8, adding some defense to that pawn, preparing queen a5, we see rook a c1 from Ali Reza. Very logical move. The queen comes to a5, and Ali Reza now sidesteps with his king. <clears throat> Excuse me. Often this diagonal can be sensitive, especially because Ali Reza wants f4 very soon. That's his attacking idea. And now here Mamadov uses a huge amount of time. They're roughly level at this point. He's trying to decide, do I go pawn b5 already? Do I look at exchanging this bishop and then playing f6? Well, he goes for f6 immediately, but the computer does not approve because of how you kill this piece. So Ali Reza drops back. We get rook a c8 and now f4. He's steamrolling forward. This is unpleasant. So bishop h6 played, pinning this pawn to the queen. Now we get knight d5. Excellent use of that outpost. And because it's just so difficult living with that knight, this is why we see an exchange. But after pawn recaptures, there's still problems. You're threatening queen e6 to then win this knight on d7. It's unprotected. And this is now a long-term weak backwards pawn. Not pleasant. So knight f8 played, covering that square. And now Ali Reza doesn't play the most precise move. He can keep queens on here with, say, queen d3 as a decent move. Black's never actually threatening to take here because rook a1 traps that queen long term. But Ali Reza goes queen c3, offers this exchange, which is accepted, and he's saying long term, this is still a great end game for me. And he is correct. So knight d7, it bounces back. We get rook e3, pressuring that e-pawn. And now Mamadov goes for this active defense that wasn't forced. So he could have gone knight c5 here, preparing e5, and if on passant, well, the knight supports this square and the rook and everything like that. Different way of playing. But he goes pawn a5 here. Again, look at the time. Really tough to make decisions now on that amount of time. And after bishop e1, targeting the pawn, a4 is played. Ali Reza captures. Why is Mamadov just giving a pawn? Am I saying his name right? Mamadov. Yeah, Mamadov. Sorry. Uh, well, after the pawn captures, we get rook a8. And this is the idea that black wants huge pressure now down the a and c files, kind of playing it like a Benko gambit, where you get big pressure and at least the knight finds some hopping squares. So a5 play to save that pawn. We get bishop f8, covering the e-pawn, preparing to then activate this rook. 
bishop b4 from Ali Reza, rook c8 played, and a3, bolstering that dark squared bishop. And this is Mamadov's idea. He goes b6, gives a second pawn, but look at the activity of his pieces now. It is a nice defensive strategy. c4 is hit, so Ali Reza defends, and now f5. A very harmonious pawn structure. The bishop coming to the long diagonal. So rook d1 played, keep an eye on this square. On a good day, maybe you start pushing these pawns. We get knight f4, sorry, a4. The rook drops back here, and now h5, another good move. So Ali Reza goes h3. He'd love to get g4 in. So h4, absolute best move to clamp against that, because even though after bishop e1, you've now created a weakness for Ali Reza to target, well, when you go down here and attack this, you leave the defense here. So knight c5, we saw this swap of pawns, and after bishop f3, clearing the e-file to then come and attack this pawn, king f7, the king scuttles over just in time to hold that one together. But Ali Reza still a pawn up. He's got the bishop pair. He's got some time advantage. This is real pressure. We get rook e1 played. Rook c7. Bishop g5. Slow incremental improvement. Bishop g7. King h2. King safety. Bishop f6. Looking to trade. Pawn h4. Do you want to trade already? Make me give this pawn... Uh, take with this pawn here maybe i can create a parcel one day well mamadov goes for knight d3 holds off on that for a moment plus it gets him one more move closer to time control ali reza saves the rook by bringing it to e6 and here he induces a blunder and this rook to e6 move you know it's a classic tricky tricky ali reza move because we see the most natural move on the board played this knight retreating to c5. Again, it's just an easy flick of the wrist move. You gain some time control. But what should have been played, well, actually taking here is good. After the f-pawn recaptures, which is best, you can then go rook a4 to target this pawn, and it's actually dropping off the board. This is just a level position. But we see rook, uh, sorry, knight c5 played, attacking this one, but Ali Reza ignores the threat, and takes on g6. Fantastic start to this tactical combination. Now it looks like this shouldn't be possible because after knight takes, surely here, after recaptures with check, black then taking the bishop, black's just doing well. An exchange up, this gonna drop, winning game. So it shouldn't be possible to take this one. You've got knight takes, but actually after knight takes, here's the devilishly tricky part. You don't recapture with check. You flick in this in-betweener of bishop to b2, hitting this rook. And black's got two pieces hanging. However you shake it out, white comes out ahead. You know, if you capture here, well, then you take with check. Captures, captures, and you're a piece up, bishop. None of the combos work. So we do not see this one captured. Instead, Mamadov goes for this. Rook takes on f3. It was the best response. Ali Reza now finds a brilliancy. The best response right back at him. So he takes on e7. The rook captures. Bishop takes back. This one now captured. And after g3, defending this pawn, attacking the rook, so not yet saving the bishop, the rook has to save itself and Ali Reza picks up here. And when the dust settles, he's two pawns ahead. This is ominous, even with the time back on the clock. So the knight retreats to d7. Knight b6 a threat, attacking both pawns at the same time. So we see bishop c7 played, covering that square. So the knight now comes to f6, looking for new kind of a hopping, attacking ideas. And Ali Reza drops this bishop all the way back, preparing to run these pawns, also adding some defense to d2. We get check, king h3. That king is boxed in, uh, boxed in, mate threats could be in the air, but the rank is currently covered. And now surely you go rook d1 as black. You know, threaten this and then this and pick up the rook and king g2 is best and the game goes on. You know, you can actually already push a pawn. Give this one up. This is a sample line and invade like this. Then you're running the h pawn. This is how the game could have gone if rook d1. But this move is weird. I'm not sure if it's some kind of board transmission or if it really was the final move. 
Dunno. But rookie four was played, and it shows here that Mamadov lost. Maybe he resigned, or, well, he must have resigned. But, yeah, this seems a very strange final move and a strange moment to resign. Maybe there were some more moves that didn't get transmitted. Don't know. But it's lost. The pawns are marching. Ali Rez is in full control. Beautiful tactical shot at the end there on time control to clinch this one. If you enjoy, do, uh, enjoyed this video, sorry, do smash that subscribe button to never miss a future one and see another epic game of chess. Check out the video on screen. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.